Hello, everybody. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure for me to have with us one of India's most accomplished uh, directors, uh, one of the most accomplished movie makers of our times, uh, Padma Shri uh, Shekhar Kapoor, sir, with us here. Sir, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us at the India Inclusion Summit. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So I would like to know, what is your vision for uh, FTII? If I had the power, and I don't, I would have combined FTII and IIT. Uh, world over, when students come out of IIT, companies come to recruit them. And therefore, the students have the potential and the hope that one day they could become Sundar Pichai, they could become the head of Indira Nui, they could have become the head of Pepsi, they could become the head of Google, the head of, of Microsoft, and they could start their own billion dollar startups, they could head MIT. And so IIT students are doing that. Uh, my vision for FTII is that world over people say, the people, the students that come to out of FTII are world class, and we should look at all the students because they have had not only the training, but the exposure and the discussion and this fundamental philosophies behind storytelling. That's one vision. The other vision is that I think a little bit we are out of date at FTII because filmmaking and technology, media and technology are the same business now. You know, um, even every time the technology is changing so fast. So the way we disseminate our stories and FTII or anything that has to do with media is fundamentally a storytelling enterprise. Everything is a story. Everything is a story. So how you tell your story in what forms you tell your story is really important. How you tell your own story, how do you edit it? How do you put it out? That's one aspect. How do you disseminate it? That's the other aspect. How do you market it? How do you send it? How do, so then we have to go back to the consumer, to the people that want to listen to your stories. How do they want to listen to it? And that technology governs. Beautiful. So sir, tell me one thing. You know, what is the power of movies to drive social change you know do you use movies as a medium of storytelling which in turn drives change or do you start with saying this is my vision i hope this is what my movie achieves at a larger scale or is it just a very simple pure medium of storytelling that's it and you leave it there how do you see that it's both and let's not fall into this trap of defining and confining mm -hmm. it's everything um, when I did Bandit Queen, Pool and Devi actually got into the parliament. You know, uh, was she was a, a, a woman that was gang raped and low caste and fought back and went back to her, uh, the village where she was gang raped and brought every man and young boy out and shot them dead. That was her story. And through the movie, it became so famous that she actually won an election and got into parliament. So movies can't change, right? Um, I think that if you are telling your story, because ultimately the story has, has to come from you, right? So if you have a story that comes from inside you, you just hope that the same story is somewhere appealing to my audiences from inside them. It's not the superficial, it's not the superficial or not the top layer of plot, right? It's what is happening beyond the plot. It's what we call the subtext and the subtext, you know, if I did, when I did Elizabeth, I met women that had shaved their heads because at the end of the film, the actress shaved her head to say, I'm a virgin. Did that happen in history? No. Did they suddenly mean that, oh, I am Kate Blanchett? No. They recognized in themselves the fundamental subtextual emotions that were flowing through the movie. And therefore they identified with the movie on a much more subtextual level. And that's what you hope when you're doing a movie on the, you know, when you're driving from point A to point B, you know, when you're driving in America, you, you have to take care of the traffic rules. You can't go the other side. You have to stop at the traffic lights. You cannot, exp you know, go beyond. That's a plot, right? But that's not all you're doing. There are a million things happening from the time that you left and the time that you arrived. There are a million thoughts and million perceptions and a million things happening in your mind. So in a film, it's the same thing. A movie will give you that million things that will be provoked inside you. That's why the, some of the best movies in the world are, are movies that you can see again and again. So if you watch, 
um, 2001 Space Odyssey, right? I've seen that film 10 times. Each time I've understood it differently because the filmmaker has left those moments, gaps inside the film, as he puts it, and those gaps you fill with the state that you are in. You know, if I've studied Buddhism, I understand it differently. If I'm a student, I understand it differently. If I'm 12 years old, I understand it differently. Then I, 12 year old, when I become 60 years old, I see the same film and I understand it differently. It's, it's a different story. That's what movies can do. And that's why they, 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 they can change things because you give yourself to them. Mm. That's what the fundamental thing about a movie hall is you walk in and say, I am yours to the movie, you know? Do you have your personal favorite amongst the movies you made? And do you watch it again and again? You know, there are many people who say, I don't watch my own movies, but do you watch your own movies? I've never watched all of Mr. India again. I've watched scenes from it because people put them out. I've never watched, I only watched Bandit Queen once again because uh, somebody wanted me to do a director statement. So I said, I better see it again. And I came out and that became, made it my most personal movie because I came out and I was crying and everybody said, well, why are you crying? I said, because I'll never make this film again. Maybe last final question, sir. Uh, a lot of the audience at the India Inclusion Summit uh, are people with disabilities and you know they are having their own challenges. Any final message to them? Uh, you know, how, how do you think they can deal with their lives? Uh, you've mentioned about your own struggles, your own challenges. Uh, any final uh, message for all the audience who are part of the India Inclusion Summit? You know, it's very easy to say, that mental or other disabilities, physical disability, you can see mental disability, you are exploring, you still, we are still unable to identify them. And uh, we are tending to define them, but I don't want to say anything that will decry from the efforts of trying to analyze these mental disabilities. But I will say this, that we haven't been able to identify them that carefully. If I had all these mental disabilities and I came through, I'm not saying that we shouldn't keep trying to identify them, but I would say that what we need to do when we examine their perception, if it's a mental disability, we need to contextualize our own perception also. So the, if it's a mental disability, the perception of that or the person that we say is has a mental disability cannot be understood unless we understand our perception. It is one perception on trying to understand the other, but what we often do is our perception is fine. Now let's look at the difference in you perceive differently, you express differently. We need to train you to express this way. Now, I'm going to color that because I know that there are a lot of people out there with, especially under COVID are having mental challenges and there's a lot of people trying to help them. So I don't want to take away from their efforts. They're really good efforts, but we need to understand and our own sense of schizophrenia when we are completely normal. You know that our schizophrenia, for example, doesn't have to be a, a, a constant thing. We all get schizophrenic at times. You know, there are moments of schizophrenia with every artist. You know, this, this wow, I have an idea. is sometimes a schizophrenic moment that you just comes and goes. So we need to understand ourselves also when we are dealing with mental disability, physical disabilities, yeah, we can see them. And I have seen people overcoming physical disabilities in, in a way and leave, leading even more because they need to overcome a disability. I've seen them leading even more fruitful lives and not people who, what we say, don't have any, any perceived physical disabilities because they try harder, you know, because in their, yeah. their attempt to try harder, they are, they are greater achievers than most of us. Thank you so much, Shikhar, sir. I wish you all the best with Pani and all your multiple uh, initiatives uh, and your role at FTI. Uh, I wish you all the best and thank you so much for your time. It's been such an honor to speak to you. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you, for Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.